it's the Popcorn Colonel. If you were looking for someone else, you're on the wrong channel. The last few years, Microsoft's Xbox conference has been criticized for being too broad for its target audience. Microsoft was leaving gamers behind in the dust so they could showcase their vision for the Xbox One being your DVR, Blu-ray player, TV tuner, Netflix player, YouTube player, oh, and also it does games on the side. This year, Microsoft shed all of the unnecessary fluff and barraged us with a ton of games including Halo 5 Guardians, Forza 6, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Gears of War 4. Halo 5, no. Go. Oh, Guardians, I'm sorry, it's rude to yawn over someone's video game trailer, but that shows you how excited I am for yet another Halo. Reach would have been a good note on which to end, especially as Bungie left afterwards. Halo 4, on the other hand, was lackluster, with new weapons that were pretty boring, and new enemies that were uninspired and had none of the depth culture, history, likeability, or staying power of the Covenant, or even of the Flood. I can remember almost all of the events that transpired in the original Halo trilogy and Reach. I can remember having hours of fun in both of those, but I don't think there was a single thing that really stuck out as being memorable in Halo 4, except for the fact of how bland it was. The only good thing about Guardians that I can say so far is that Malcolm Reynolds, aka Richard Castle, aka the human known as Nathan Fillion, is providing voiceovers once again. Halo 5's Warzone mode mixes AI and human players in competitive multiplayer. In other words, it's Titanfall. And apparently, Spartans decked out in 500 pounds of armor can now do Olympic level gymnastics. Yeah, sure. Halo 5 Guardians releases October 27th, 2015, and is exclusive to the Xbox One. Forza Motorsport 6 is looking beautiful, bringing back the racetrack experience that the series is most well known for, but whilst seemingly adding the dynamic weather system of Forza Horizons 2. I still think Forza is better than Gran Turismo, the crew and company. I'll keep you updated as the Forza 6 car and track list are announced, as well as any other features. Suffice to say, if the graphics of the trailer are truly rendered using the in-game engine, this could indeed be the best looking console racing game to date. Forza Motorsport 6 is, as always, an Xbox exclusive and arrives September 15th, 2015. Recore or Recore. Well, however you want to say it, it's a first-party game featuring a robot dog and a lady exploring a barren wasteland and fighting a bunch of robots. All we really know so far is that it is a new IP, that it's developed by the creators of Mega Man and Metroid Prime, that it is an Xbox One exclusive, and that it has a release date of Spring 2016. As the lady collects a power orb from an enemy, and her companion dog blows itself up, yielding a blue energy core that she places into a larger robot, I'm going to say that it's safe to assume that your companion will be upgradable throughout the game, either as part of the story, or perhaps through collecting red orbs and using them to power larger and more powerful companions that you'll find throughout the game world. ReCore is developed by Armature and Comcept, and will be published by Microsoft Game Studios. We also saw the first gameplay footage from Rise of the Tomb Raider, a game that has PlayStation 4 fans everywhere irate. After all, Rise of the Tomb Raider is a timed Xbox One exclusive, so meanwhile PS4 gamers have to settle for playing The Order 1886 and games about a flower on their souped-up Ouya. That is a joke, of course, referring to the fact that at the PS4's launch most of its titles were indie games. Anyway, Lara Croft is back doing Lara Crofty things like scaling an ice cliff and fighting a bear. It's always nice to see a female protagonist kicking some arse, especially as video gaming becomes a less male-dominated pastime. Rise of the Tomb Raider releases on Xbox One on November 10th, 2015, the same day as Fallout 4. There is no release date yet for the PlayStation 4 and presumably PC versions of Rise of the Tomb Raider. Gears of War is a game about a bunch of irate steroid junkies who run around chainsawing everything they come across. 
and sometimes they change things up and shoot stuff instead. So it shouldn't come as much of a surprise then that Gears of War 4 involves running around dark corridors whilst shooting, hacking and chainsawing your way through a plethora of aliens. Something about having a chainsaw on the end of a machine gun just seems to be a winning combination and there will probably be many more sequels and spin-offs to come. Gears of War is exclusive to the Xbox One and has a vague release schedule of holiday 2016. My money is on an early December launch. I've covered most of the major games that were announced at Microsoft's E3 conference, but there were some other cool announcements too that I wanted to bring up. First, the original Gears of War trilogy is being remastered and re-released for Xbox One as Gears of War Ultimate Edition. I have a pass for the beta, so I will be bringing you feedback and videos in the coming weeks. My favourite announcement though was Mr. Todd Howard informing us that there will be mod support for Fallout 4 on Xbox One and, at an unspecified later time, PlayStation 4. Bethesda is well known for including modding tools with its games, which has, in the past, allowed anyone from casual modders to a dedicated development team to do anything from adding new custom weapons and armour, to adding entire continents complete with new voice acting, new music, new quests, entirely new storylines and complete graphical overhauls. While the graphical overhauls probably won't be available on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 due to the comparatively limited power of the consoles, it's nice to know that, at the very least, fans of Fallout 4 will probably be able to fix any little bugs that go unpatched by Bethesda themselves. Do you remember a little developer called Rare? Well, their new game is called Sea of Thieves, and as the title somewhat implies, it's a game about being a pirate. But it's also multiplayer, which should permit hours of fun as people rage quit after I broadside them with every cannon on a man of war proudly flying the Royal Ensign. Oh, wait. It's a game about pirates, not the Royal Navy. Never mind then. Sea of Thieves will be released on Xbox One and PC around the end of the year 2016. And speaking of rare, 30 games of theirs, including Banjo-Kazooie, Battletoads and Conker's Bad Fur Day, will be released in one box set in honour of the company's 30th anniversary. It will be exclusive to Xbox One and releases August 4th, 2015. Finally, we also saw some gameplay footage from Ubisoft's titles Tom Clancy's The Division and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Ubisoft should pretty much just rename one of their studios Tom Clancy at this point. Both games are looking great though, and I am excited to jump on and play with friends when they release. But first I should probably find some friends. I'm the Popcorn Colonel, stay tuned to this channel for more information from E3 and the games showcased within.